Welcome back guys to the 2D platformer tutorial series. In this one, we're gonna continue where we left off and keep working on crouching. In the last lecture, we implemented the basic functionality. Now when we press the S key, the player plays the crouching animation and we switch collision shapes so that the player can fit through lower, smaller spaces like this one. So this is the basic functionality. And in this lecture, I want to implement what happens when the player tries to stand up, but there's an object above the player that is going to intersect with the player's collision shape? Because we're going to switch collision shapes, and with the taller collision shape, that is going to be a problem. For example, if I go under this box, you can see that my collision shape fits here, but if I try to stand, Godot will just go into crazy mode because we're trying to put our collision shape on top of another collision shape and the physics calculations are just going nuts. So in this one, we're gonna use ray casts to detect if an object is above the player. And if so, we're not gonna let the player stand and we're gonna stay crouched. Even if the player lets go of the S key in a situation like this, we're gonna keep him crouching. And when he crawls outside of the underneath the object, we're gonna automatically stand him up because the player is not pressing down the S key anymore. Okay, enough explanation. Let's get to the implementation. Let's start by going into the player scene. In here, we're gonna create a Raycast node. So let's create a new node, which is going to be a Raycast 2D. And we're gonna need two of these actually. Let's first configure the first one. You can see that by default, the Raycast is looking down. And all a Raycast does is, it is basically a line that detects if anything is touching it or not. And by touching, I mean physics, you know, collisions and stuff like that. So to change the position of the raycast, we're gonna change the target position in the inspector. I'm gonna set this to be like negative 25, and I'm gonna take it and put it on the left side of the player. And you're gonna see why when we start using this. We don't want the tip to be exactly at the player's head level, but we also don't want it to be really up there. So this, this height looks fine to me. One important thing to have is to have exclude parent turned on, which is on by default. With this, the parent nodes, you know, the collision shape and stuff like that will not be detecting, will not get detected by the raycast, which is important. So we're gonna duplicate this, but first let's rename it. I'm gonna rename this to be Crouching, let's say crouch, raycast one, raybast, okay, that's funny. Raycast one, and let's duplicate it and put it at the right side. And we're gonna call this crouch raycast two. Okay, good, so that is all that we're gonna do in the scene editor. Now let's switch to the script. And in here, first I'm gonna create references to these uh, raycasts, so let's say crouch, Raycast one, crouch raycast one. Let's also get a reference to the second one so that we can use them easily inside of our script. And first, I'm going to demonstrate how to use these raycasts. So let's go into, hmm, let's see, let's bring up the process function. Why not? And I'm going to say print, let's say crouch raycast one is colliding. So this function is colliding will return true if the raycast is colliding with something and it will return false if it's not. And we can turn on, is it on? Yes. So visible collision shapes is on. So now if we play the game, you can see that we have two raycasts here and I'm going to go under this obstacle and you can see that helpfully the Godot by default is rendering these lines in red if something touches them, if there's something colliding with them. So we didn't even need the, the console output actually, because that's enough to understand this. But you can see that when I go under something and the raycast is touching with the box, we're returning true. And if not, we are returning false. So that is how we're going to use these things. If I go under something, I'm going to check is raycast is colliding is true. And if it is, I'm not going to stand up. So it's very simple actually. And to be honest, it seemed to me like the raycast is really up there. We actually don't want it to be that tall. 
because I was looking at the standing image. So maybe it is more helpful to go into the crouching animation and then put the raycasts like this. So that might be smarter. Let's see. Yeah, okay, so now let's take a look at it. Okay, let's go back into the script. So this is how we're going to use these. I'm going to get rid of this because we don't need it. So first of all, let's write a new function to detect if the players, the area above the player is empty or not. So let's go down here, create a new function. I'm going to call this above head is empty. And this will return a Boolean. You can also denote that like this. It's not the best name for a function. I'm open for suggestions for a different name. Uh, let's see. Okay, so this will return a result and this result will be crouch rake s1 is colliding. Oops, not you, is colliding. And so this will be not crouch raycast one is colliding and not crouch raycast two is colliding and we'll return result which is a boolean okay so the logic here is very simple if the first raycast isn't colliding with anything and the second raycast isn't colliding with anything that means that the area above the player's head is empty so if this is true we're going to be able to stand up basically okay so the standing up is currently happening here. When the player releases the crouch input action, which is the S key, we try to stand. We're not going to do it this way. We first want to check if the area above the player is empty or not. Okay, so let's use the function that we just wrote. Let's say if above head is empty, we're going to stand. Else, currently let's not do anything. Or maybe let's say print can stand up above head area not empty let's play the game and i'm gonna go under this box and let go of s and you can see that the player didn't stand up and we're printing can stand up the area isn't empty okay and now i can actually walk around and even though i'm not pressing the s key i'm still crouched but now we want to make it so that when the player goes outside of the box, we want him to immediately stand up because currently we're not holding down the S key. To do that, we can actually create a variable that is going to hold some state for us. We can say stuck under object. So this variable is going to represent the fact that the player is actually under an object and he is stuck meaning the player isn't trying to crouch, but the player can't stand up basically. Okay, so we can set that variable here in the else statement. So instead of printing this, we can say, if stuck under object isn't true. So if we didn't set this yet, let's say stuck under object is true. And we can actually print something, player stuck setting stuck under object to true just so we can see it when we test the game and so when, if this is true we're gonna outside of these if statements here inside of physics process in this case we're gonna keep track of this so we're gonna say if oops i'm caps lock okay if stuck under object and above head is empty let's try to stand we also need to set stuck under object to be false again so that we don't try to do this again in the next frame. But here the logic is very simple. If we're stuck and the above head is empty, let's just stand. Okay, we can also print something here. We can say player was stuck. Okay, I guess that is fine. <laughs> let's let's play the game and see if this works. So I'm gonna go into crouch mode, I can do the same stuff here, it still works. And I, now I'm gonna go under the box, let go. And you can see that we're printing player stuck, setting stuck under object to true. And now I'm gonna crawl outside of the box with the S key released. 
And now you can see that the printed player was stuck, but he is getting up. So I'm gonna do the same thing again, get under the box, let go. This time I'm gonna hold down S and we still get up. So that is also not good. So that's another bug that we just created, but at least we fixed the other bug. Okay, so let's take care of that next. Okay, actually see if you can fix that on your own because it is not going to be that complicated. So if you want to give that a shot, you know, pause the video now and give that a go. Otherwise, I'm going to try to fix this because this bug wasn't even in my plan. I just discovered it. Uh, so let's see. So when we try to stand, we should probably do a check if input is action pressed. Let's say crouch. So if crouch isn't pressed, let's do this stuff. If it is pressed, we don't want to try to stand. So that will hopefully fix it. So I'm gonna go under the box, let go, hold down S again and go outside. And this time I'm still crouched. So we didn't try to stand up in that case, which is good. So let's also let go of S again and go outside. In this case, I'm expecting the player to get up and he does get up. And I can also do the normal crouching stuff outside of here. Okay, so finally, I just realized actually my placement of the raycast is wrong because if the obstacle is just above the raycast's reach here, and if we try to play and we go under, right now we're not detecting it. So if I try to go stand, it will actually will ha have the same bug here again. So I think I had the, the correct setup at the beginning here. So I'm going to go back into idle and I'm going to take my raycasts and actually currently they aren't even aligned. So this one is a little bit, okay. Now they're aligned. Okay. And I'm going to make these guys, hmm, let's see, let's actually take them and just put them here. That's probably fine. Okay. Okay. So let's try this again. And this will be the final thing we do. And as you can see now, we also don't try to get up. And you can fine tune this. So this should probably stop trying to make us go down at this point, or maybe this, because with this, we should be safe. But I think this will still detect. Yeah, it will still detect. So we can actually stand up here, but it is not letting us. So that is also not good. So let's go into the player and maybe make these a little shorter, like negative 22. Okay, let's try again. I'm just fiddling with this at this point. It is still detecting. So uh, it should probably be the same height as the collision shape. Actually, now that I'm thinking maybe just a tad bit like a pixel longer. Hmm. Let's see. Let's put it at negative 16, uh, negative 16. So here, as you can see, it works, but let's actually get a couple few of obstacles here. Okay, so this should be no problem. Okay, we can't even get under this, so <laughs> fail. Okay, so this works. We should also not be able to go stand up under this. This also works. But these ones we should be able to stand up under and they also work. Now that is also fixed. Awesome. So that's going to be it for this video. Now the player can crouch and we also fixed all the edge cases and the different types of functionality that we need to have. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.